Hey everybody, this is Mr. Bortnick for AP Calculus AB. We are in unit three differentiation, composite, implicit, and inverse functions. Today's topic is 3.5, selecting procedures for calculating derivatives. Enjoy. Welcome to 3.5, selecting procedures for taking derivatives. I'm gonna say up front, this is probably the shortest video that we're gonna have this year. It is entirely review of the first uh, couple of sections and a little bit from chapter two, because all we're trying to do here is figure out what is the best procedure to take derivatives. Our practice today is a bunch of different derivative uh, equations. And the tough part for these simply is trying to figure out which rule should you use. And we wanna make sure that you get some practice on making those decisions, because the AP exam and tests in general aren't gonna say, hey, Use the product rule, use the quotient rule, use the chain rule. We need to look at the problems and, and identify those. So what procedures have we talked about so far this year? In unit two, the first one that we learned was this thing called the power rule for taking derivatives. We then learned how to take the derivative of constants, right? The derivative of any constant is zero. We then ha learned how to take uh, the derivative of constant multiples. So what do you do when there's a coefficient in front of a variable? Then we learned the sum and difference rules. After that, we learned a bunch of trig rules. So trig derivatives, sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, secant, cosecant. We learned all of those. We learned how to take the derivatives of exponential functions. We learned how to take the derivatives of logarithmic functions. So that's like including the natural log of x or log base b of x. I guess for exponentials, we'll mention, you know, we learned how to do e to the x. We also learned how to do a to the x, some other base. And then the two big ones from unit two that get used really, really often, uh, the product rule for taking the derivatives of things that are being multiplied and the quotient rule for taking the derivative of two functions that are being divided. That was our summary for unit two. And again, all of these derivative rules are on our unit two review sheet, uh, which was posted around the time that you took the chapter two test. In unit three, you know, these are really the only ones we're gonna learn. We've got one more lesson after today's, uh, but in the first lesson of this chapter, we learned the chain rule, which is how you take the derivative of a function inside of a function, AKA composite. We learned implicit differentiation in the second section. We learned how to take the derivatives of inverses. And then in our last lesson, we learned how to take the derivatives of inverse trig functions. And that's it. That's really all that we've covered in unit two and unit three in terms of the rules. And this is sort of the list of rules that we need to know. If we know these, uh, A, we're gonna do fine for the unit three test, but that's gonna help us moving into unit four and unit five when we do applications. Um, again, there is nothing new in this section. We are simply gonna go ahead and do the practice. Uh, the answers are posted. Again, your real goal is to think about of these topics that we've talked about, which ones apply to these problems. Uh, please try those out, check your answers, and then do our mastery check. Have a great rest of your day. Take care.